Hello everyone, this is John Buck. Welcome to another Continuous Time Linear Systems video. Today we're going to talk about stability and linear time invariant systems, um, particularly how we can look at the impulse response and just tell from the impulse response whether a linear time invariant system is stable. This story is again very similar to the story we saw in discrete time, uh, that it will come down to the absolute integral being finite for the, the uh, uh, for the LTI system. And this sort of makes sense that we can tell this just from looking at the impulse response, because as we saw in the class earlier videos in classes about convolution, right? if I have an LTI system, the impulse response tells me everything I could want to know about that system. It completely determines the system, we say. right? For any input, I can find the output. So if the system is LTI, knowing the impulse response should be enough to let me tell about other properties like stability and causality, and we'll see that today. All right, so I'm going to pause here and switch over to the whiteboard. Okay, so for uh, an LTI system, looking at the stability, the key idea is what I said in the introduction a minute ago, putting an equation into it. We say an LTI system is stable if its impulse response is absolutely integrable. So as that equation shows that the integral of the absolute value of h of t over all time from minus infinity to plus infinity has to be finite. And we could go through and derive this. I, I might do that in a separate video, but I thought a higher priority would be to show you how we use this in practice with a couple examples. Uh, and then if there is time later, I'll make another video showing uh, how, this come, how, this, how, we, how this condition results from our standard definition of stability for any system. So let's look at an example. So in this example, we have an impulse response that's minus 3 quarters of t plus 3 halves for the region from minus 2 to plus 2, and it's 0 otherwise. And that's the, I've, I've sketched the uh, impulse response here too. So it's a little uh, descending triangle that starts at t equals minus 2 and goes down to 2. So if we're going to uh, check the stability of this, we're going to say I need to look at the integral of the absolute value of h of t dt from minus infinity to plus infinity. And so we can look at this and say, well, if I want to plug this in, well, one, one simple thing, I cannot worry, in this example, I don't have to worry about the absolute value because this h of t is always real and positive anyways. So I can just plug in for h of t. And the other thing I'm going to do to simplify the integral, taking things very step by step here, is to say, well, I really have three different regions for this integral. I'm going to break this integral into this, this infinite integral into the sum of three integrals, one from minus infinity to, plus, to, oh, to minus two. Right, so I have one integral from minus infinity to minus two, the next integral from minus two to plus two, and the last integral from two to infinity. All right, so this is just using a standard property of integrals we learned in calculus, that I can take any integral and break it up into different integrals as long as I still include all the times, right? Intuitively that makes sense if an integral is the area under some function, as long as I include all the pieces of the function, I can find the area one region of the time axis at a time. But the key idea why I did it this way is, is that it, we now have a different expression for each of these integrals and beautifully two of them get really simple, right? As I can look the first integral and the last integral and say well the absolute value of h of t from minus infinity up to minus 2 is 0, and from 2 to infinity is 0, right? And since the integral of 0 over any region is still 0, I can just cancel those terms and leave me with the middle term, where I'm now going to plug in the equation for h of t. And as I said a minute ago, I don't need to worry about the absolute value for this example, because when I look at my picture of the function, I can see it's always positive. So that's another advantage of sketching these impulse responses before you start doing the integrals, is it will help you recognize where the function is positive and negative. So there's a little pro tip I'm giving you for free, because that helps you figure out when you need to think about the absolute value inside your integral. When they're all positive, life is much easier. So next step, I just dust off my calculus skills and do this integral. So uh, the integral of minus 3 quarters t plus 3 halves t, I'll integrate each term and get minus, uh, minus 3 halves t squared plus 3 halves t, I, I, now, because this is a definite integral, evaluate it at the upper and lower limit. So when I do that, I have minus 3 halves 2 squared plus 3 halves 2, which is what I get for this when I plug in the 2, 
and then I get I subtract from it the the, the expression evaluated at the lower limit. So minus three halves times minus two squared plus three halves times minus two. So let me simplify this a little bit doing some some basic arithmetic. So when I've simplified it like this, it makes it clear that I've got a minus three halves times four and a plus three halves times four. So I can cancel those out, and I have a plus three. And the minus 2 and the minus sign here became a plus, so I have another plus 3. So altogether, this thing will be 6. And because, so, so, and because 6 is less than infinity, that tells me the system is stable. Now, for this particular one, we should have expected that answer anyways. For a sim another advantage of drawing the, the, the uh, impulse response out, like I did at the top here, is we say, well, because this is all positive, that integral is just the area under the triangle. And I almost don't need to find the number. I can look at it and say, is the area under that triangle finite? Well, yes, it is. Right? I have a base that's four wide, a height that's three. So the area of a triangle is one half times the base and the height. So one half times four times three gives me six. So I, that's another good sanity check that I've got the, the integral right. And, and again, right from the start, if all I actually cared about was system stability, I could almost look at this and say this triangle has finite area, so the, air, the integral magnitude of h of t would be finite and the system would be stable. So that's a good intuition to start building, is linking the areas shown in the picture, whether it's finite or not, to uh, whether or not the system is stable. So we have time. Let's do one more example of a, of a different case, and then, uh, then we'll finish up. Okay, so for the second example, our impulse response is that h of t is equal to u of t minus 4. That is a unit step delayed by four samples, like I've drawn here. So, oh, I forgot to label the amplitude of my unit step. So again, I start from the same integral. Actually, let's do this. Uh, I'm going to give you a small challenge. Pause the video for a minute and think about whether you expect this to be stable or not based on how, when you look at that picture, how much area do you think is under eight, the magnitude of h of t? So pause the video, think about that for a minute and come back. And then we're going to keep that answer in our pocket until we get to the end and you can check whether your intuition was right. Okay, so now that you're back and you have your answer, don't tell me yet. I don't, uh, you keep it to yourself and we'll see when we get to the end whether you guessed right. You don't have to tell me now. So let's, let's first start with our integral, our definition for stability. Right, so the integral of h, magnitude of h of t dt from minus infinity to plus infinity. So also, as, as to help you build your instincts with this, I want you to pause for a minute and think about, well, how many pieces should we break that integral into? And where do you want to break them? So think about that for a minute and come back and see if, if what I do. Okay, so now that you're back, my strategy would again be looking at where the values of this change. I'd go from minus infinity to 4. And I'm going to, uh, with, with magnitude of h of t, which we can already look at this and see it's always going to be positive. And then another integral from 4 to infinity. And the reason I chose 4 to break it out is that's where the function changes, right? Inside each of these integrals, I can easily write a very simple equation for the magnitude of h of t. Right, so this lets me simplify the integral a lot, but that's the strategy you should have in mind when you think about taking these infinite integrals and breaking them into manageable pieces is to be thinking about, well, where does the function change or the equation describing the function change? Maybe the, that's changing all the time, like the triangle we saw the last time, but we had different regions, particularly where it stops being zero or starts being zero, are good indicators of where I want to have limits change on my integral. So again, if I think of this one, I can say the first term well, the, is the integral of zero, so that's going to cancel out, and then I'll just be left with the second term. Right, so now you can do the uh, do this integral out and say, well, I'm going to get the integral of 1 d tau, dt is just t from 4 to infinity. Well, that's infinite. So that tells me that the signal is infinitely long, or sorry, the, the in integral of the impulse response is infinitely long, which tells me the system is not stable. So this this example system is not stable. So there's there's a, a basic intro into how we decide from the impulse response if a continuous time linear time invariant system is stable 
Again, it comes down to, is the impulse response absolutely integrable? I've shown you two examples, one where it's stable and one where it's not. <clears throat> and so we'll finish up here. This is a, a good length to stop the video. And I'll go on and make another video next about uh, causality. It works the same way. I realized I've gotten away from my habit of putting up the end credits. So here's the, uh, the end credits for those of you who uh, might be interested from, from other universities in finding out about our university, more about our university uh, or my research program. So again, that's all for this video, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day.